Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico, and welcome to the channel. If you're watching this, thank you. The series isn't getting a lot of views, but it's really important to me. I love rankings, uh, and I've always wanted to do this. 133 favorite bands, it's a random number, but it's just where it landed. These are the people I care about. Today, we're doing number 125. So I made uh, playlists for all these artists. I made 133 playlists. Each one is 80 minutes long. So I'll put the link down below, and if you want to listen to 80 minutes of this artist, you can. And uh, the way I rank them, I just ranked the um, playlists, and then I considered uh, how much I just sort of care about the artist. Do I read articles? Do I read books? And uh, have I seen the artist live? If I have and they put on a good show, that, that bumps them up a little bit. So that's it. So number 125, there's no bumper today. We're just getting right into it. Um, it's an artist that was born in 1938 in Kern, Germany, or Cologne, if you prefer. Five feet, 10 inches tall. She was naturally reddish brunette hair and is considered the god goddess or godmother of gothic rock. Yeah, I'm talking about the actress and chanteuse, Nico. Nico is not an easy listen. Um, I probably came to her in some ways late. I mean, I, I was a Velvet Underground fan for a long time, but I didn't really explore. I mean, I tried to explore her solo catalog, and at the time, it, it, it sounded a little... Uh, not my cup of tea, but over the years, she has really grown on me. I think her music has aged really well. And so, yeah, all these albums like uh, Chelsea Girl and The Marble Index and Desert Shore, these are wonderful. Never saw her uh, live. Uh, she pretty much just played Europe and, uh, and the East Coast and, and that kind of thing. So I never had an opportunity to see her. And I don't think I would have anyway. She died in um, 1988 in a bicycling accident at the age of 49. So uh, she was uh, in Ibiza, Spain, and had been denied uh, admission to a bunch of hospitals, and they misdiagnosed it as heat exhaustion when she really had a cere cerebral hemorrhage, and so she died the next day. But I do have... Um, some uh, music. I don't have any of her solo albums because I got into her kind of late, maybe in the 90s. And uh, then, of course, in the 20, in the 2000s, streaming and that kind of thing came along. But I do have uh, this Velvet Underground four C five CD box. Uh, actually, it might be six CDs. It's uh, No, it's five CDs. Peel Slowly and See. So, uh, is that what's called peel? Yeah, peel slowly and see. So I have this, and of course she's on here. But then, um, you know, to show you how much I care about her music, I have this book uh, by Richard Witts called The Life and Lies of an Icon. And this is an interesting, interesting book. I paid a lot of money for this book. Uh, I uh, traded in a bunch of books before I moved to Mexico. And I didn't want to bring a lot of things down. And they had a, a $50 price tag on this book. Yeah, $50. And I went ahead and used a trade to get this. And I read it about two years ago. Really interesting. Not a particularly nice person. She had uh, turned her son on to heroin and things of this sort. But yeah, she's brilliant. And she started off doing some covers, Jackson Brown. Bob Dylan, and then she wrote some of her own songs, and I like uh, Frozen Warnings and Janitor of Lunacy. Great stuff. Um, yeah, she's got that deep voice, uh, very interesting, and yeah, not everyone's cup of tea. So if you like Nico, write me a comment. I'd love to read what you have to say, and as we say here in Bonita, Mexico, buen dia.